Welcome back to EW Morning Live. Dalton Ross here with you on Entertainment Weekly Radio. Fear the Walking Dead was back with a double dose on Sunday night with its mid-season premiere. And we got one of the stars of the show. She plays Alicia. And her name is Alicia. Alicia Debnam Carey joins us. What's going on, Alicia? Hi. Good to see you again. You too. Good to have you here. Yeah, I just mentioned, you're, 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 you're Alicia with a Y, yet yeah. you play Alicia with two eyes. Couldn't they, when you got this job, couldn't you have been like, hey, let's just you know make it the same? I really didn't easy? think about it, and I really think I should have thought about it more. <laughs> um, it was, but in the sides when I was auditioning, the character was called Ashley. So I just assumed it was Ashley. And it wasn't until the table read when we were, it was, well, with everyone and all the producers, all the, the AMC people. And suddenly the sides, the, the whole script was just Alicia. And I was like, oh, <laughs> it might be a little late to say, mm, could we change it? <laughs> but I don't mind. Like, I kind of like that name. It's, I mean, you'd hope I like it. <laughs> it is my name. Um, but it's, it, I, it did feel a little bit different and just you know, different spelling. It's different accent. I don't know. The whole thing felt a little bit different enough, so I didn't mind. I, have to I get asked all the time about it. I have to ask Erickson about that. That's interesting, too. Like, after they they put you on the show, was it like, oh, we actually like that name, but we're going to spell it differently. Like, but yeah. still. It's, I, it's, I, I keep thinking, well, I guess Will Smith did it, or <laughs> 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 it was it Prince of Bel-Air? Yeah. I was like, maybe I'll just be like that. I'll just keep it at my name, and it'll be fine. <laughs> but yeah, it's a little confusing. We spoke out at Comic-Con a few months ago. I told you how much I'm really digging season three, and I think fans are really liking it a lot. And um, it just came back, two episodes, and a pretty fascinating two episodes, especially for your character. And, and uh, Dave Erickson, the showrunner, I was speaking a lot about that the other day um, because we see her calling her mom out yeah. here in the episode for back-channeling mm -hmm. uh, with Walker. And not only that, but then she goes up to Walker herself and it's like, don't listen to my mom, uh, you know, listen to Jake, uh, which I thought was kind of fascinating. So what's her what's her deal with all this? I just think increasingly, especially since the end of the first half, we've noticed there, Madison's alliances are very unclear. I mean, she's obviously willing to do whatever for her family, but without telling them necessarily what's actually going on. And so I think they've gone to this knowing they've had a loss to get there. They've had to sacrifice a lot to get there. And now it's they don't really know if they can trust her and what she's doing, despite the fact that it's like, you know, we're all in this together. Um, and so I think she's just seen her make some very odd choices. You know, the whole um, First Nation, like being on that land and then making deals with the devil, with the, the Ottos. And yep. like I, we've seen how that ended up, but it's I think she's trying to get some stability back in the ranch and she knows that jake's probably the the you know the person for that and and with madison manipulating a lot of these situations she's she can see what her mother's doing that's the thing it's not like subtle really i mean she's trying to make it subtle but it's pretty deadly in many respects and so i think she's just she's trying to maneuver some of these things herself i think alicia's one of the characters in this that actually has her head really on her shoulders. Yeah. I think she still has her ethics and morals slightly intact. Or she, It's not just like, you know, kill or be killed necessarily. It's Whereas for Madison, I think that's still a little unclear. Like, she'll do anything. Like, we've seen her do some pretty crazy things um, for, you know, to maintain that power dynamic. So I, I don't know if I think Alicia just needs to... That relationship between Walker and Madison is becoming increasingly more just direct between the two of them. And then it means there's a lot, the power dynamic is completely right. unbalanced. So what I like about this half of the season, we're seeing Alicia really just making her own decisions about where the ranch should be going. And it's starting off that she realizes that she should be involved in this more. And that she can be. Yeah, and uh, we see a big moment at the very end of that second episode where it looks like we have this big firefight and we have more bloodshed because you got people from the reservation and you got people from the ranch that are just fighting and fighting, fighting. And there's Alicia kind of in the middle digging, looking for water, trying to solve the problem. And the t and the sides sort of eventually sort of move over mm. and join her. Mm. Um, is that a pivotal point, or is that gonna uh, are things gonna change as a result of that, or not? I feel like it's an olive branch rather, more than anything. It's not necessarily a, a viable working option to find water necessarily. I mean, they're trying to, and it's trying to bring the two sides together. But I think that is what it is. It's trying to find some harmony 
and and instead of ripping each other apart like it's trying rather than not trying and making everything just worse at least with trying it might something might good might come out of it um yeah it, it definitely ex- expands beyond that too we kind of it's a hope that like it might not just be about back channeling and it, it doesn't this ranch doesn't have to be about two sides there are little steps you can take that might work well that's her that's her leadership moment in yeah. a way right i mean isn't like um she's like also you know you gotta listen to troy and uh, mm-hmm. i mean listen to jake and talk to jake but she's kind of jake's i don't know where jake is but she's there doing that yeah. you know what i mean like she's emerging as a leader herself yeah. and i don't think she realizes that yeah like she i think she knows she probably has that in her or has a confidence has a leadership but i don't think it's ever really c- could occur to her that she could do it or that she could rival her mother in that way or she could rival jake and and we see we saw jake mention it you know previously he was like well you know anyone could be the leader of this ranch i mean you could and she's like well that's you know that's not what i'm talking about but i think she does have the right characteristics to to maybe do that we'll see where that leads going forward i mentioned i've mentioned showrunner dave erickson a few times he's actually leaving the show mm-hmm. at once he finishes this post-production on the, the end of season three and two new showrunners are coming in and scott gimple is going to sort of take an oversight role have you have you spoken to any of them yet or yeah. met them yeah we had a great meeting at comic-con um and it's all been just a little bit like I, I, we're starting up again really soon in November, and so mm. I know they had to. We finished in July, and then we they had a couple of months to really restart everything and figure out you know where we're going to be if it's a new location, you know where these stories are going to continue on, and um, who's staying, who's leaving. Like, there <laughs> yeah, are so right. many facets of it, uh, and so it was just great to sit down with them and tell them what we value about this show. I what I think is so e- exceptional about it is how it is bridging the worlds between the supernatural that walking dead element of it but it is very much grounded in these uh this family drama and these characters that are very very real we've seen their development from being completely normal people to now seeing them how they got to where they are now that very and it's not larger than life characters it's not necessarily comic book characters that we're used to it's very like you know real people <laughs> like a school counselor that suddenly is now <laughs> chopping off heads and delivering it to yeah. enemies <laughs> well it's interesting you had that a feeling out sort of meeting at, at comic-con have they given you any sort of concrete info in terms of your character and what they see for no your i have a meeting forth? with them um when i get back to la <laughs> i know i'm so excited yeah, I know. you want to find out i'm I sure know. we're always bugging them too yeah, but then like they won't give us anything. Intel. Well, right it's now. It, it's interesting because that's something that that uh, people probably don't realize happens as often as it does on television. We I mean, look at the Walking Dead show; mm. they've had three different showrunners, and that's the most successful show on television. Even yeah. as the most successful, they sort of these things happen. How is it like for you guys just dealing with the change itself? Uh, um, you know, I uh, me personally, in my life. I fear change. Like I'm just, right. I, I totally just, I get comfortable in my routine and comfortable. I know this person, I know what they expect of this, that, that, and then change just freaks me out. Yeah, Are you I, like that at all? Or? Well, I don't think you're alone in that at all. I think it's very human, <laughs> like natural human response to change. I, 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 change for me comes in two di- very different ways. I don't mind it with this job so much. I think that's what I love about it is that this job allows me to be anywhere and change locations, change jobs, change characters. Like I value that so much because it's constantly evolving and it changes you. Um, but when it does come to more personal stuff with showrunners and and the family you've created, that does become a little bit more difficult because you have built a trust and knowing how the show is going to come across. It's very small details too, like what framing they use to make you look a certain way or how they shoot things. Um, even small things like that, the, the way it's edited, it can really change when you have different people in charge. Uh, so, but it, it's a great family. You know, AMC has a really strong family. So, of course, I'm, you know, you have to trust them. Um, but for us, I mean, we've we've changed four locations now in yeah. the seasons. So that, and we're going somewhere else. Like, so where the next ones. Was season three shot still in Mexico? Season three was in Mexico, but we first did... LA, we did right. Vancouver, then we did Mexico, and now we're going somewhere else. Right. Which is fantastic. You get very different landscapes. You get to try different things out. But also, you know, as you were saying, like that change can be hard because you've made a family and you've developed a crew you really trust, and then you have to let them go. <laughs> right. 
that's hard. Yeah, it is. What What would you do in Mexico when you weren't shooting? Like oh. when you had days <laughs> off or nights off? What What were you What were you up to? Oh, there wasn't a lot to do yeah. in where we were in Mexico. <laughs> um, it was a lot of. To be honest, we were working such long hours. Um, and in the these locations that were so far out of the way. Yeah. So whenever we got back to the hotel, I'd just be like, "Oh my god, give me a drink and let's just like right. relax." Like. It, we we sometimes we go to Tijuana, which is its own mental <laughs> Thing, experience. Yeah. yeah, tell me the Tijuana stories. Oh, I don't want to hear about just going to, to sleep in the hotel. I, Jesus, I think I'd have to kill you if I did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Don't tell me where the bodies are buried. No, um, will not. <laughs> well, we're talking with Alicia Debnam Carey, star of Fear of the Walking Dead, which is back on Sunday uh, nights on AMC. What about when you were on the water? I remember talking to Kim Dickens before you guys were on the water, and she was all, I remember her being all worried about getting seasick and having her Dramamine with yes. that water tank and stuff. What did you think of that experience? I mean, I, uh, it was harder than I expected. I know Kim was very much, like, she prepared everyone. She was yeah, like, I'm going to be seasick. I've got my seasick patches and my Dramamine. She was ready. Um, I wasn't anticipating anything and then was ready to get out of it. Like I was, it just takes so long to shoot that kind of stuff. You have to, the, the way the tank is, you know, it's a, um, the perspective of it, it looks like an infinity tank. So from one angle, it just looks like continuous ocean along the horizon. But it means you have to change the position of the ship every single time you shoot, which is like 30 minutes of re like resetting. So, I mean, I, like being cooped up on a boat, that's just not fun. Yeah. So I was very ready to get out. I, could, I, I yeah. can imagine. But there's been so much water as well on this, sh this show. We constantly find ourselves back on. I had to learn how to drive a boat, actually, recently. You did? I did. So, like, how did I that go? I wasn't very good. No, you weren't? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> they have some pretty funny blooper footage of me running into the, the dock, trying to dock the boat, <laughs> and the camera just falls over the side. How big a boat are we talking about? It was like a, you know, a speedboat kind yeah. of thing dinghy it's yeah. not a big boat but i'm just not very good at it we had all these floating um infected in the water and i kept i ran over one of them and it got <laughs> caught in the rotor <laughs> yeah there's some pretty funny footage of me then like not knowing how to reverse it and so it's just like going in a donut around the, the, the tank You'll see it. It's I coming need up soon. All this footage. Yeah. <laughs> I need every second of that footage. And they had me doing some serious training as well. They, we did like nine hours in, you know, this body of water. And it didn't really make much of a difference for me. <laughs> How fast did you get it? I mean, like I, even in the training, did you get to just like put No, I had to go in? as fast as I could, but it wasn't that fast. Right. The boat, which doesn't sound so fast. I don't like, know. Cool. I, I don't know. I've never. You know, driven a boat in my life. Did you have to learn any the terminology? They bother with that, like, oh, this is a starboard, starboard and aft, and, and like all that stuff. Uh, I feel like I got to a point where it was like it was just, can I just flick the the red one, and then <laughs> you'll pull it that way? Yeah, horsey fly, sure, whatever, port star. You know what I mean? <laughs> like lost. I love that. Um, what is, so like in terms of if you with the with the new showrunners and once we get to season four and without spoiling anything obviously that comes up in season three, if you could make a wish list, you mentioned that you were talking about your character and sort of how, if you could make a wish list for things that you want to happen in the future mm -hmm. for Alicia for your character Alicia not yourself but you can tell me what you want to happen for yourself as well if you want we all have dreams <laughs> Alicia I don't want to squash your dreams. my ambitions yeah, are real but no like what would you like to see eventually like look look let's look long term what where would you like this character to get eventually or have ha like happen for her i mean i definitely think it's already happening in this second half which is finally for me that was like yes we're seeing her really change um i think it's just you know i want to see her become um a her own entity that's not necessarily connected to anyone um and that uh, I don't know. It's hard, like, because uh, I I know it's like great when you had the family dynamic together, but I also like I want her to not be the daughter and not be the, you know, the the sister. I want I want her to be like this kind of rogue entity almost. Like that could be really really cool. Um, right. You don't want her just defined by her relationship to other people. No, but I think that's happening, and that's already right. started to happen. And it's it definitely for the second half. It's becomes a a very big point 
How often are you still accosted by fans of the hundred? Um, every day, <laughs> on a daily basis. <laughs> Constantly, right? Yeah, yeah. Very, very passionate people. And how often do you have to remind yourself to call it the hundred and not the one hundred? I stop. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh, it's so true. Um, I I think I got into the habit of it because I found out that I was pronouncing it wrong. And then from that point, I was like, oh my God, I can't believe I've been doing it. It's so bad. <laughs> and so then I made a real conceited effort to make sure I was doing it. But it's not your fault. It, it, you look Which at it, confusing. it says the 100. And it's also, the- I think if you're from any Commonwealth uh, country... We say it a little bit differently to Americans, maybe. All right, so tell me how you would say it in your natural the voice. The 100. How, right. But the 100 right. is how it is, but I don't know. Maybe I'm just making sh- stuff up. <laughs> you can say the other word. No. I can. <gasps> what? I like, she looks over at the Joe, the producer, <laughs> like, is this okay? Can I go there? Can I say that? <laughs> Trust me, this dude was just cursing on the other day. Uh, so, like, how did you finally find out that you were saying it incorrectly? Oh, Who was the one that told you? I think it was just a bombardment of social media <laughs> posts saying, it's not the hun- it's not the 100, the 100. <laughs> like, oh, no. But they loved but you they, on that show. Yeah. Lexa, I mean, come on. Yeah, oh, it's an epic, iconic character. I couldn't have been happier to be a part of that, for sure. It's <sighs> insane. It's amazing how it's just connected with so many people. It's incredible. Yeah, still. Um, so uh, tell us what, Alicia, what we can expect. Give us some teases for what can happen. We know that um, that uh, Madison and Walker are off uh, trying to get some water. Mm-hmm. You guys are digging. Uh, probably not going to have some much success with that dig. Uh, what yeah. can you tell us about Especially what... Especially not on the top of a <laughs> yeah, hill. Exactly. It's <laughs> not like, a good place. I'm going to find water there. <laughs> to be digging. What, what can you tell us in terms of what's coming up? Um, there is some great stuff coming up. Alicia is on her own at the ranch. And she has to take a lot of responsibility for a lot of people. And there's a big threat coming. There's a storm a coming. <laughs> and Love she's it. gonna she's gonna have to deal with that. Well, I can't wait to see. It's been a great season so far. Cannot yeah. wait to see. I like, think it's our best one. I, I, I think it, absolutely. In the second half, I'm serious, it just gets better and better and better. If we really found our groove this season. I, I think so as well. I was talking with Robert Kirkman about it the other day and asking him about it. It's really interesting to find a, a show, find its groove in like season three. He goes, yeah, you know, it kind of mirrors season three of The Walking Dead. He said oh, it right. felt. So, you know, you had the, this new group with Woodbury on The Walking Dead and, and, and this is very similar to the reservation and the mm-hmm. ranch. And then you got good people and bad people within each. And it's just sort of, a, there is a, a parallel there that I hadn't really considered, yeah. really hitting its stride. It was hard too for us because we had to like let a lot of people had seen The Walking Dead and then these were these new characters that were making all these mistakes that you already knew as a viewer. Like, don't do that. Why would you do yeah, that? Yeah, don't talk like, to the guy on the radio yeah. when you're on the boat. <laughs> <laughs> I'm making up for it, okay? Um, yeah, all these mistakes, and, and but they're real people and that's what's so great about finally now you're seeing them succeed and you're seeing them be powerful characters amongst other people, be leaders, be dangerous, be confusing manipulative and so it's i don't know i'm i think it's rewarding for people to finally see that without a doubt all right alicia devnam carry thanks so much for coming in always Thank great you. to see you enjoy your rest time till november when you're back at it wherever you guys are going to be shooting thank you all right we'll be back with more on ew morning live